A very warm welcome, fellow refiners, to another episode of Refinement Not Retirement, podcasting today, as usual, from the beautiful Cotswolds village of Elmley Castle. My name is Tony Coe. I usually co-host this podcast with my wife, soulmate and life partner, Christine, but she is not joining me today. Instead, we have a very special guest, which I'm so to whom I'm so ex excited to speak about one of my favorite subjects from the great USA as part of our series about one of the best refinements that we've ever made to our lives, one, one that we've talked about a couple of times before on this podcast, that is the fabulous sport that is pickleball. Our special guest from the great USA, the USA, as I've said, is Jared Franklin. Welcome to the show, Jared. Thanks, Tony. Happy to be here. And of course, always happy to be talking pickleball. Of course, me too. Thanks so much for joining me. Um, if I may, I'd, I'd like to let, uh, not, I don't want to do the normal thing and speak for too long about all your credentials. I have read about you online, but I'd rather, rather leave you to introduce yourself and your company that's making such a great name in pickleball. Can I do that? Absolutely. So my name is Jared Franklin. Uh, I work and have a family business called Franklin Sports in the United States. Franklin Sports was founded in 1946 by my grandfather. And then my father took over. And now my brother and I are third generation Franklin family members. Um, Franklin is actually not only involved in pickleball, but um, we have about 11 different categories in the States. Uh, we have licenses with the NBA, NFL, uh, MLS, NHL, um, a whole slew of other uh, activities going on with our business. However, um, in the last five years, pickleball has 100% become our highest growth category. Wow. And that's largely because pickleball is, Tony, as you can attest, amazing. Yes. And addicting. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> So I, I work on the international team. Um, and like I said, we have many different categories. However, my time the last year has largely been focused on pickleball um, due to the number of uh, activations and number of passionate organizations and people that are really looking to grow the sport internationally. Um, although in many regions, the sport is just starting there is no doubt um, in my mind that it will continue to increase in its popularity and increased investment will will follow behind. Absolutely. To fuel that growth. Uh, it's 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 been a real phenomenon in here in, in the UK. And I know you've been over recently for Pickable England's um, national or open tournament. Um, how was that experience? How did it compare to the, I know you put on great tournaments at the USA. How did it compare? Tell us about your experience. Yeah. So for those listening that, that don't know what the um, English open is, it's put on by Pickleball England. Um, Pickleball England is a wonderful organization with wonderful leadership in a woman by the name of Karen Mitchell, who I know has been on the podcast before um, Karen and her husband, Chris, are fantastic people, just the top quality humans that you like to associate yourself with. They have a great team as well behind them. Um, but this tournament that they just put on, which is which was the 2023 English Open, um, was home to more than 1,050 athletes mm -hmm. um, from 35 different countries. They oh, had sorry. taken over the Telford International um, Convention Center. And if you can imagine, you know, what a convention center would look like, this one was quite large, three different halls, all converted into a pickleball mecca. There were 40 pickleball courts, hard court pickleball surfaces brought in um, from other partners of theirs based in India that, um, that had this beautiful um this beautiful flow of sport and community occur for the last i just got back on uh monday uh on monday 
And for a week I was there and I was living, breathing, loving all things pickleball and networking with many people all over the world. It was fantastic. Well, that one of the things about pickleball, and I can tell from what you're saying that you, you've found the same, is you meet such great people, don't you? I mean, it, it's that there's something that, about pickleball that just attracts really interesting people. That's what I like about it. But the, hearing about what you were saying about the, uh, the the fact that they actually bought in what I will call proper pickleball courts, because yeah, I mean that was such a such a good thing to do. Uh, unfortunately, here really the only facilities that we, well, largely the facilities, the only facilities that we have, unless you go to Karen's house where she actually has a pickleball right, court right. in the garden, <laughs> in the backyard, as you would say, uh, and unless you are lucky enough to have an access to an outdoor facility like that, it's an indoor sport because we we have to play on um, badminton courts really, and we you know we normally most clubs provide their own nets you know yeah so you know it's interesting because england has uh an uphill battle as far as um the weather yeah um it's almost as though i feel like england skips a season in the summer yeah. there is no summer it seems like I, I i on i think it was wednesday of last week in telford i had breakfast and walked out of the hotel and i was dressed completely wrong for the occasion it was like 50 <laughs> degrees and rainy i said to myself is it not summer so i was surprised yeah. by that but yeah i i think that you know um the weather does create issues but you can play pickleball on tennis courts yes you can um, and, and you know for every one tennis court you could potentially put four pickleball courts three yeah. comfortably but you could fit four um and the badminton surfaces are great for people that are interested um, in trying it for the first time. But as we all know, it's not the ideal surface. So what I'm really hoping will ultimately happen, Tony, is that um, someone will be the first mover and invest to build a dedicated pickleball facility, um, follow what we call in the U.S. Um, a chicken and pickle model. So in the U oh, United yes. States. Oh, yes. I've heard of that. Yeah, go ahead. You tell, tell our listeners about that. Yeah. So in the U.S., there's a new phenomenon, which is you have a pickleball facility with anywhere from like three to, let's say, 12 courts and more and or more or less, but just in that range. Um, and you create an environment where there's food, drink um, and a social scene. So you can go there um, and you don't necessarily have to play pickleball, but that's an option. Of course, everyone wants to. Uh, but you go and you hang out, you meet new people, and you can play and you know make an evening of it, if you will. Yes. Um, this is a model that I think would work well in the UK. And there are many groups in the UK, clubs, well, they're called, that already have you know more than a couple. They have a couple hundred members. Yes. So, you know, I think people would start to flock to these dedicated facilities. And um, I know that in talking to many people at the Open just last week, this is something that's on multiple people's minds. Multiple groups are looking into this now. So that I, I, you know, was excited to hear that because yes. there's something special about playing pickleball on a proper surface with, of course, our proper X40 pickleball um, that you don't necessarily get playing on a badminton surface. No, we although we have played because uh, we had players from our club coming to that um, great event, and uh, we did actually uh, deploy the X40 um, so that they were used to it. It's you know very different from the sort of indoor balls that we're used to playing with, uh, but it was important, obviously, that they practiced with <laughs> with the right with ball. the tournament ball. Yeah, so yeah. yeah. And yeah, so the Franklin X40 ball is our outdoor solution. Um, and it's actually the official ball of USA Pickleball. Um, yes, I saw that. The official ball of Pickleball Canada, as well as we're the official paddle of Pickleball Canada. Um, it's the official ball of Pickleball Mexico, Pickleball Singapore, Pickleball Sweden, Pickleball England, um, and uh, a whole host of other organizations and, you know, more than a thousand tournaments every year. So, um, yeah, I mean, it, it, in the indoor side, you would use our X26 ball. So there's products for each 
But but what, would, again, what would be the difference there? But what is the difference? I mean, I'm familiar with your um, X40 product because whenever I go to Naples in Florida, um, most people want to play with that ball. Um, yes. Uh, but what's different about the X26, the indoor so ball? The X26 is different. It's a harder plastic um, formula, and it has 26 holes drilled in, um, whereas the X40 ball... Um, is a uh, it's a bit softer and um, it has 40 holes um, what I will say is that a, a, a outdoor ball and indoor ball the construction is slightly different as well so the outdoor ball is a single piece construction whereas an indoor ball is a two-piece construction mm -hmm. um, and again the playability is just different because you need to have a different type of formula in the plastic to perform um, as best it can based on the surface. So a wooden surface, a badminton surface would take, um, uh, or a basketball surface would take a X26 ball. But an indoor facility that has, like for example, an indoor tennis court, uh, that would take your outdoor ball. So anything that's a true hard court um, that you know would resemble a tennis court would be used with our X40 ball. Oh, that's interesting. So, so you're th you're talking about sort of more of an acrylic surface, are you? So, sorry, an acrylic surface. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Right. But but if it's a bit if it's a bit, bit more spongy, like a badminton court, then probably the X twenty six is. You want your you want your X twenty six. Yeah. Yeah, because that I mean I was reading on online that um, I think it was a Forbes article where there was a line like you know Franklin the Franklin Sports Group you know decided to own the pick, pickleball ball space is that you know you 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 essentially set out didn't you to to uh yeah make sure everyone all these tournaments were using only franklin balls it seems to work very well because when i go to naples uh you know people tend to come on with their own ball that they want to play with um it, you know when people are sort of doing these mix-in things on a on a daily basis and it's a, i always think it's a bit like wine you know so, some people have got their fa your favorite oh no that's terrible wine other people think, oh no that's great but uh most people i noticed there have, have have gravitated to your uh your x40 yeah i i think largely tony um the ball is very durable so you're getting value yeah and the ball plays really well um, you know, the tournament directors, when we first started out, of course, we, we, the goal was to kind of reach out to all the tournament directors and, you know, basically request that they use our ball. And the, the, the tables have kind of shifted in that most tournaments in the U S and globally now reach out to us because they're interested and they want to play with what the player wants to play with. Yeah. Um, which is the X40 ball. So it took a lot of, of energy. It was a, a, a complete team effort on our side, figuring out the formula, figuring out exactly how to make this ball perform um, to be the, the, the premium ball in the sport. And, you know, like you said, I'm happy to hear that um, and, and experience, you know, that hard work come to, to come to the finish line where we are the number one ball in the world. It's fantastic. Now you mentioned about getting it because this would be a great thing, and we've tried here um, to get uh, pickleball into tennis clubs on tennis facilities. Mm -hmm. But there is there has been a bit of a um, sh shall we say stigma around pickleball, uh, which we've been trying to get over. Because I, you know, in our conversation that we had previously, uh, Jared, I I had to confess to you that I was one of those snooty tennis players. Um, when I was playing every day in Naples, Florida, when we had our winter home there, and uh, people was talking about this sport, and I saw these little nets, you know, set up on tennis courts, and they were trying to yeah, get like, what? What is this little this, yeah, this also, little fake this fake game? What is what could it be? <laughs> I'm not going to go and play that, you know. Yeah, yeah. It's like a kid's sport, you know. Um, of course, I was so wrong. But that stigma still exists um, here. I noticed, by the way, on your on your website, I think you have a picture of Sam Query, don't you? Uh, yeah, Sam Query uh, is um, is one of our Franklin family athletes. Oh, right. um, when he when he retired at the U.S. Open last um, September, um, he declared that he was going to go full time pickleball 
and do everything he possibly could to to give it his best in the pro side of pickleball. Uh, but for, yeah, Sam is a, a great ambassador for anybody that plays tennis that is kind of weary of this sport. Um, it all goes, you know, it, it all goes back to pickleball is addicting. So if you try it, no doubt in my mind, you will enjoy it. Um, and, you know, when you watch people play pickleball, they smile a lot more than when they play tennis. Yes. Um, yeah. You know, and, and so- and there aren't those there aren't those aggressive sort of arguments over line calls. I mean, there are sometimes arguments over line calls, but in pickleball even, but nowhere near the, the, the degree that you get in tennis and the sort of sit gravity of everything that you get with tennis. It's fun. And you know, what I love about it is that you can play, you can pick it up reasonably as, you know, tennis, there's, you know, there's a lot of, there's a lot of physicality to it, isn't there? I mean, you know, you've got to have top spin on both wings and that's quite hard to develop with a tennis racket and you can get tennis elbow and all that sort of thing. But with pickleball, you can be playing the game. If, you, if you've got hand-eye coordination, you know, you can be playing the game at a reasonable level within not very long. It makes it so nice that you can pick it up and then really be playing at a high level. Yeah, I think it's a, it's great. For those reasons, um, and, and in addition to those, to, to it being able to be picked up quickly, um, it's fairly easy to get started, right? Because if you have a tennis court, um, you can set up a, a temporary net. All you need is two paddles and a, and some balls, or even just one ball. And you know what we found is that people will find a way to play pickleball. For example, just at the open in Telford, people were using court. Uh, barriers uh, and chairs to kind of yeah. go back and forth and play any which way they could. And, you know, even though they were playing tons of pickleball, they needed more. They wanted more. Yeah. Um, but I think what what really makes the sport truly uh, unique is that, um, for example, in the U.S. Open, you have your junior juniors all the way down to you know first starting out playing at eight years old or six years old, but then there's an eighty plus division. Yes. Um, as well as, you know, wheelchair uh, division. Um, so, you know, I think you can get on the court with a person um, in their later years of life and you can have someone on that very same court, for example, a grandfather, father, son, mother, daughter, and absolutely play pickleball together, which in tennis, you know, there's a there's a skill gap, like you were saying. Yeah, that, um, I mean, that's such a great point. I mean, I, I found that I I taught uh, um, our grandsons to play. Um, uh, and, uh, you know, it, we could we could have great games, you know, several generations on the court um, and have great games. And, and the old wrinkly folk like me, uh, you know, we can compete because it's because pickable is not just physicality, is it? I mean, you know, you know, the power of the soft game in pickable so important isn't it it is actually and and before we even get into the 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 nuances of playing the other thing is at the open i met numerous father son and mother daughter teams yes yes and that that's the story of pickleball yes i don't want it's hard not to try to pitch pickleball at all times because i'm just so passionate about it yeah me too it's so fantastic me too. I mean, I, in in the in the wake of that uh, tournament tournament in Telford that you've just been to, uh, we ha- we have really seen an uptick in we we call our our group pickleball in the Cotswolds or Cotswolds picklers, and even though we're in a very rural area, uh, we've we've seen a, a big surge suddenly in people wanting to come and learn learn the sport. Um, and as I say, if they if they got any previous racket experience it can be ping pong it can be badminton tennis of course they can pick it up quickly and, they can uh, they can have great you know they get they have great fun which is which is great so what are what are franklin's plans uh first of all i'm sure you're going to talk about your global expansion because that's your title i think it's what you're in charge of isn't it jared of global expansion correct um, what are your plans first of all for the uk and then wide in the wider world in the UK, we're we're right now we're all about um, doing anything we can to support pickleball England's efforts, hmm. um, as well as uh, individual um, ambassadors 
of ours. So we want to we we want to understand the landscape at all times. Um, we want to know and find a way to get pickleball products um, into the clubs, into the tennis centers. Um, if they're not willing to give us uh, their hard court surface, you know, it seems like they're willing to give us their badminton surfaces. Yeah. Um, and I think with increased demand on the pickleball side, it's only a matter of time until the tennis facilities. Like in the U.S., Tony, when you when you talked about, um, you know, your background coming from a diehard tennis or a long history of tennis and, and traditional tennis background, it was the same way in the U.S. where tennis clubs, you know, and pro shops didn't want anything to do with pickleball. But again, um, their tennis business kind of has remained flat or was, re you know, staying flat um, and they needed to fill courts. So the demand just kind of pushed the 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 levies, you know, over it, as they say. So, um, you know, we we want to be there to be able to um, offer product kits to these clubs as necessary as needed. Um, and as far as our plans, we, we you know, I love traveling to England. Um, I plan to be at the English Nationals just in October. Um, and I love communicating and I love networking with everybody there because again, the passion is, is so infectious. And, um, and so we, we, we want to be part of the growth story any way we can. Yeah. I mean, the, the um, I, as I said, I think that the idea of having proper pickable courts in Telford was fantastic. I think we're quite a long way off though, being able to sort of wean ourselves off the uh, badminton surface, not because we don't want to. Uh, but premises, property is so expensive in the UK because we're a tiny island compared to you and everything. I mean, major corporations have found, you know, that have expanded into the UK have found this as a, a big barrier, you know, just being able to pay for the premises on your on the business model that you operate in the in the States is very, very difficult. And the thing about the badminton courts is that they tend to be multi, they tend to be part of a multi-purpose facility. You know, so they, they can be transferred to basketball, uh, badminton, uh, walking foot, walking soccer, you call it what we call it, walking football, rug, rugby, that sort of thing. So we're, we're that way. The, the premises are able to sweat and really produce a, a return. Building something, uh, you know, that's purpose built for pickleball is is a really, really tough thing. Yeah, you know, th there were um, people from the U.S. at the uh, English Open mm -hmm. that, um, you know, that's what they do. They build dedicated facilities in the U.S. and they were kind of there to, to get the appetite um, yeah. of pickleball in England, um, you know, kind of scouting uh, what the demand could be for, you know, one or more of these facilities um, in the U.K. So I was I was really happy to see some U.S., you know, investment and development groups there yes um you know i i think that you know playing on a badminton and multi multi-surface kind of um environment it's without a doubt possible and it's done all over the world it's mm -hmm. not you know the the ideal you know uh mm -hmm. because you don't get the um, true experience but you do get the ability to play and understand the game and it's played at a high level for example, in in most of Asia, um, the the courts right now are 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 on a badminton or you know, indoor multi uh, surface kind of um, flooring, but um, but yeah, I, I think you know you got to take advantage of the outdoor courts and the outdoor tennis facilities and the public you know the public facilities. Are there many public tennis court you know run by counties or or council? There, there are there are a few, but they're because you know at the moment uh, e e our economic situation is not great, you know, and these are run by councils who are hard up for money, so they tend to fall into disrepair, you know. But there are certainly there is there's certainly potential there, you know. D there's definitely, and of course, as you well know, Jared, this is an outdoor sport. Really, it was it was invented as an outdoor sport, and I love it when I'm you know when I'm in Florida. Um, being able to play outdoors the way that the game is supposed to be played. Uh, yeah, the, so major I, the majority of the, the tournaments in the U.S. Um, are going to be outdoor. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, 
you know, I, I also would encourage people to find a way to, to, to get yourself a, you know, a starter level set um, and just kind of hit the ball. Even if you don't have a net, just hit back and forth, get yourself a pickleball paddle and a ball and just check out why it's it. What, what about, you know, just even holding the paddle, it's easy. It's light. Yes, um, true. The ball, you know, although, you know, the ball doesn't move uh, as quickly as one might think. Um, yeah. So it's a lot, makes it a lot easier to, to get to, but even in your driveway or street, um, just hit back and forth with somebody and kind of feel what it, what it could fit, you know, visualize yourself getting out and playing. That's, that's, that's a great point. In fact, you've, you've, you've inspired me now to get my net out of my garage or garage, as you would say, <laughs> and set it up here in the village um, outside um, on a nice day and, and invite people to just have a go. Yeah, I think that's a really good idea. I hadn't thought of that, but I think it's a very good idea. Yeah. So uh, what about, is is the UK sort of the second um battleground for you to co conquer or, or you see that after or i suppose you've already conquered perhaps Me mexico canada no doubt north america yeah. but um is that is uk the second biggest market or are there other places well there's the us and canada yeah you know by by far in a, in a way the largest markets um you know the the uk is has a piece of my heart because i i feel so blessed to be um in partnership with pickleball england um, and Karen and her team, they, they really are driving the sport and, and and raising the bar for everyone else in Europe and the world Definitely. to see what pickleball can be um, and how a tournament can run um, to house the, the maximum number of people. Um, so because of my relationship with, with them and, and because of my joy working with them, you know, I want to see pickleball grow and succeed in, in, in England because I know they all want that too. So we have, you know, our, our like-minded goals um, really. So, so what I'm trying to say is my, my passion project, if you will, is to, you know, of course have a large focus in England. Um, and I, I think the number one uh, important piece of this is getting people out on the court. doesn't matter the court surface. I know we've talked a lot about surfacing and at the end of the day, it's, it's getting people exposed to the game um, getting people uh, out there to try it um, and understanding that, you know, there are ways to watch pickleball now um, through YouTube. There's, you know, in the U.S. we have contracts now with ESPN and some of the other major networks like um, CBS and um, others. Um, but, um, you know, I think just just getting out there and playing is the most important thing because yeah, I'm absolutely. confident that people enjoy it. Absolutely. That's great. Well, uh, we're we're running very close to our uh, deadline here, so I'm just going to ask you, uh, Jared, is there anything else? Number one, is there anything else you'd like to add? And number two, if anyone wants to reach out and find out more about Franklin Sports, about you, etc., what's the way for them? To, best way for them to do that? Best way to do is to um, send me an email. Um, you know, we're a personable type of business. Uh, we like to deal hand to hand, if you will. Yep. Um, so I would encourage Tony, if you can post my, my information on your site Definitely. Um, and to your listeners after the, the, the podcast, that would be fantastic. Yeah. Happy to talk pickleball with anybody, throw around ideas. Um, you know, any, no question is a wrong question. Um, you know, so please do reach out. Um, and I hope Tony that, you know, people will find the episode to be worthwhile uh, if there are any follow-up questions, happy to answer those. And I'd love to come back sometime in the near future as well, perhaps after nationals, um, which I'll be going to in Bolton. Um, yep. I encourage anybody in the area of Bolton to, um, to, to give it a go. Even if you're not playing, just come by. There's an atmosphere, there's, you know, food, beverage, uh, and a lot of good people there. Beautiful. Well, thank you very much indeed it's been terrific talking to you and, and, and meeting you uh, and hearing about the great plans that your company franklin has in helping us uh, do even greater things with pickleball here you've mentioned pickleball england many times and deservedly so and also karen mitchell um, who's a great friend and um, so proud of what she has what she has achieved and we do have an episode as you rightly said jared about that um 
Karen came on with me, and I'm sure our listeners will also find that interesting. And also, we have a previous episode to that where Christine and I talked about how we found the sport um, and uh, what great things it has done for our lives in terms of one of the major refinements that we've made. I will, of course, Jared, post your um, information and uh, thank you again for uh, for joining me today. So, Thanks, Tony. It was the pleasure was all mine. Thank you guys for listening and let's play some pickleball. Thank you. Absolutely. So for now, it's goodbye from me. And goodbye from me out in Boston, Massachusetts, across Thanks. the pond. <laughs> Thanks, Jared. See you soon. Take care, Tony. Bye-bye. Bye Thanks. for now. Bye.